Hello, hello. This is your friend, encouraging leader, Michael Jones. I hope you are having a super fantastic day. This is episode three of The People You Meet and the Books You Read. And I have to make an apology right off the bat. I misattributed or I misquoted that quote by Charlie Tremendous Jones. It is not, you'll be the same person you are five years from now, except for the books you read and the people you meet. It's you'll be the same person you are now and five years from now, except for the people you meet and the books you read. So I had it backwards. I want to correct that in, in, in all due respect to Charlie Tremendous Jones. Uh, to give you just a brief recap of what I'm doing, that quote by Charlie Tremendous Jones has had a major impact on me, and it, it's really changed a lot of the things that I look at and my perspective on, on life. Now, I've always been an avid reader. Since I was a, a young kid, uh, my, my mom used to take me to the library, and I would pick out several books every week and get immersed in, in, in mainly um, fiction. Uh, as an adult, I read a lot of fiction and got into more uh, nonfiction lately. And it's more business and mindset books. And I uh, met somebody named Sean Croxton who uh, kind of unleashed a lot of things in me several years ago through a program that he has called Money Mind Academy and the Quote of the Day Book Club. And Sean is the host of the Quote of the Day Show podcast. And uh, been through some several ideas and several things that I'm working on. And what I want to do is add value to you by sharing with you the people that I've met and the books that I've read and giving you a brief excerpt on those. So uh, my goal is to do these several times a week. I'm going to batch record these on Sunday and I'm going to share hopefully two, two episodes about a book or books during the, the week and one episode, if I can, about a, a person and have a brief interview. My goal is to keep the book sessions to 10 minutes or less and the, the people sessions to 20 minutes or less on, on the long end. I want to be respectful of your time and I know that because of COVID, a lot of us don't commute anymore. A lot of us actually work from home or we're, we're remote workers, so we don't have as much time for podcasts as, as we used to. So I want to be more respectful of your time, and, and I know this isn't officially a podcast, but um, I wanted to, to start, and, and last week I shared The, the Go-Giver, which is one of the more influential books that I've, I've read by Bob Berg and John David Mann. This week I want to move into The Four Agree Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Now today I'm going to do part one of a two-parter about this book, and I'm going to talk to you today about the overview of the book, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Now the author Don Miguel Ruiz identifies as a Toltec, which is a Mexican cultural group, and it's 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 all about a mindset and, and a belief system. Uh, one of the things that, that early on that, that um, um, Don Miguel Ruiz, I believe Dr. Ruiz, pointed out is that your, your world is made up of labels, uh, concepts, and beliefs beliefs that have been in hand, inherent and handed down to you since you were an infant. And these things, a lot of these things, you don't have a choice about. You don't have a choice about where you are born, what language you speak. Um, you don't have a choice about where you go to school and so many other things. But these labels and these concepts and these 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 things about you, uh, they, they form your reality. And essentially, um, Dr. Ruiz said that, that we're living in a dream world based on this reality. Now, this is something that's a little bit hard to, to uh, wrap your mind around and accept, but uh, once you kind of kind of accept that, you can proceed with the rest of those. So early on, you agreed to most of the rules that you accept in your life, even though you're not responsible for those things, and even though your reality is, is based on these things. Some of these rules are useful. Some of them are not. Some of, are ac some of them are accurate, and some of them are not. Um, and when you can really free your mind and free yourself from from uh, these rules that you you've you've been handed down to yourself and you've accepted. Now, of course, society has rules and laws that, that make us a um, a society that keeps each other safe. But once you remove the mental limitations for yourself, you start to see things in a different perspective. Uh, one of the things that, that's the most harmful about these agreements is that you're never enough, that you're constantly falling, falling short of some kind of ideal life. And a lot of times we see things on Facebook or social media that portray only the best of, of a person and only the very, very absolute best things and through the uh, best lens. And there's actually things like filters and lenses that can create an image that's the absolute best image of somebody. So these agreements that you've made, some of them knowingly, some of them unknowingly, these are the, the fundamental ideas that, that sometimes bring suffering and strife into your life, and, and they can really impact how you view the world around you. So you hold on to these things partly because you're just not aware of these, and partly because you don't think you have any alternatives. So 
in this book, The Four Agreements, it's Don, Ru- Don Miguel Ruiz starts out by pointing out these things and pointing out that they make you feel safe. They make you feel part of something that um, I've heard it called a, a societal contract or uh, I've heard it, heard it called many different things, but you hold on to these things. So the first thing that he says is, 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 is that you've got to master three skills. The first is awareness, the second is forgiveness, and the third is action. So the awareness part, seeing the dream and the illusions for what they are. Second is forgiveness, that's accepting the consequences of the dream uh, in you and in others. And, and the, the others part is, is going to be big later on. But action, um, taking action and, and the, um, dissolving that dream to form your own reality. And I'll start with one thing that, that just out of my own personal life, and, and this, this goes through kind of a couple of these different things, the awareness part. So I am a veteran, and, and I've um, been a runner for a long, long time. I actually ran my first race with my parents, and, and that goes back to this thing where we're handed down a lot of things by, by our parents. But I, went, I ran my, my first actual race with my parents in Mobile, Alabama, in the, the late 70s or early 80s, and it was a 5K race, and it was just for fun, basically a fun run. Um, ran in the military, and, and when I got into college, I, I gained a lot of weight, and I started to run towards the end of my college days. And I started to run in races and events, and I would run mainly 5Ks and 10Ks. I graduated up to doing one half marathon a year, and then I started to run marathons, just one early on in 2004, and then I started to do more and more. And as I started to run more, um, I got to where several or a couple of years ago, I injured myself. And in 2004, I, I severely tore my, my gastrocnemius muscles in both legs, which are the, the muscles near your calves. But I kept on pushing because I really I wanted to be a runner or I thought I did. And I wanted to be a distance runner. And a few years ago, I actually tore my meniscus in my knee. I have some, some foot things that are plaguing me right now, but these are based on a, a reality that I've created around running, and I've pushed through injuries and things like that, which I see other runners do often. And I didn't question whether this was the right reality for me and whether this was the right thing for me. So I've gone through the, those kind of steps, awareness, forgiveness, and action. And that's just one example for me. But the journey is always going to start with awareness. Awareness leads to forgiveness, and forgiveness leads to action. And, and, and I've, as I've said, the running example is a good example for me. So uh, forgiveness unlocks the space, energy, and strength th- needed to reshape your reality uh, by doing three things. It prevents new unwanted agreements from taking over. It eliminates old damaging agreements that are already in place, and it helps you to build new agreements. So this is the foundation of the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, and this is kind of the the building blocks of what the four agreements are. And in our next session, I'm going to get into what those four agreements are, what they mean to you, and how that will help you to, to reshape your reality and hopefully to help you see some things in a new light. So hopefully this time that you spent today has, has shared, has added value to you. I want to ask that you just share me if, if that's uh, something that you feel comfortable doing, or if not, come back and join me on the next one. Have a great, great rest of your day today. Thank you.